encryption locks, but with a, a special key. Lock is labeled. It's you know have a typically have the letters TSA and a couple of digits to indicate which key you know will work with the lock. So this is this is exactly what kind of you know what some some of our federal agencies are asking for with encryption. This is a lock. It's a padlock. So I won't be able to unlock it, but also the TSA will be able to unlock it. Or the TSA will be able to unlock it. Okay. So you, you you can unlock it, the TSA can unlock it, but in theory someone else can. Well, a few people, so a few years ago, someone got a hold of a set of after key, uh, took high resolution photos of them, you know, like you know, size and, and uh, another individual took these photos and built 2D models of them and uh, basically it made it this made it possible for anyone to download a set of you know, a set of models and 3D print your own keys. <laughs> so it's now anyone can open anything. Now anyone can open anything. Technology meets meets the policy of it. Mm -hmm. A web hosting company, and I would it would come in waves, like you were saying. So in the 2017 to 1920, mm -hmm. with the Google, Google federal government, mm -hmm. like. Encryption question of whether or not what how what to what extent the government laws should be able to control the mm -hmm. data privacy encryption. The cookie laws. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey, I just need. So one of the things I brought to our last one, and I'll bring it again to this one, is the Libertarians have a very nice recruitment manual. So that's something that we should be, shall we say, doing. For our own members, uh, encouraging people to run, because I don't know if you know, but something like 60% um, of all legislative elections in Massachusetts at the state level do not have a um, do not have a competitor in the general election average. It, it alternates between 50% and 60%. That makes sense what I saw on the ballots in the last you know, yeah. decade or so. I mean, I saw that on the ballot that sometimes there wasn't a competitor. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Basically trying to grow parties who are in my interests or who are in Right, right. Grow up this party in our interests, right? Yep. Speak. Sure. Can you hear me? So let's see what the let's see what the joint committee on the, on advanced information technology, the internet, and cybersecurity has. Uh, so this is um, this is basically a page from the the legislature's website. We have an act relative to the oversight of cable contracts. We have an act relative to filing slander against anonymous parties on the internet. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, I haven't. No, I'm just reading titles. I I don't. Uh, without looking at uh, an act establishing the Massachusetts open data standard. This sounds interest this this sounds right up my alley. Uh, an act establishing a commission on automated decision making by government in the Commonwealth. So this sounds like machine learning, um, algorithmic decision making. So an act relative to efficient access to the affordable connectivity program, an act relative to cyber attack response in Massachusetts. Hello, Lowell. <laughs> uh, 
um, and that creating a task force to study the use of internet by sex offenders. Relative to internet service outages. Well, it's, uh, we're still, we still haven't figured out whether the internet is, uh, we, we're still struggling with the idea that it's, you know, it's it real, whether or not we considered it a public utility, it kind of is. <laughs> uh, so, and establishing a special commission on blockchain and cryptocurrency. And uh, do you still need me to keep speaking? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. Joe, Joe, can you hear us? I know you're on the phone, I think. At least I think that's Joe. Could be someone else. Mm -hmm. That is Joe. Oh, hey Joe. Can you hear Great. Me? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm yes. sorry. I got I got caught up in other things, so I'm mostly going to be the quiet, fly on the wall type tonight. Okay. So I'm 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 very interested in H62. This is the oh, Massachusetts Open. So. Um. <laughs> Is that HR 862? HR, eight, yeah, HR 62. Uh, HR 62? Or H62, yeah. It's a bill rather than a, a resolution. I think, I think that's what the R stands for. HR H62? H62. Oh, H62. Sorry, mm -hmm. because H, I thought you said 862, and that's an act relative to protecting coastal communities. Mm -hmm. oh, H is for House, <laughs> <laughs> and S is for Senate. <laughs> So far, looks good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Public data, all data collected by a state agency in pursuit of that state its responsibility. What are you guys looking on the internet or on the I, messaging system? No, no, I'm looking. Um, this is uh, H six. You used to search for it and found it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H six two. I think. Thought this room had a screen. So no, that thing. Oh, it, I don't know how to fire it up though. But I, I don't know. Oh, that's next. We'll we'll do next next time. time. Next time. <laughs> um. All right. So is that? Wait a minute. Is that one of the? Is that one of the hearings that was due like today? Or was that the new other, the other set? Like, which uh, hearing was that supposed so, to be? So this, the hearing, um, well, it, so the testimony was due, um, no, wait. The, the event date is listed as July 13th. Or, so it, it happened okay, last week. It happened okay. last week. Yeah, I think that's that's that it was due the twenty second. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, if there's anything we should do, I was gonna mm -hmm. write that <laughs> today. <laughs> this is what's what it's due. Yeah, I mean the hearing dates aren't the only aren't. The, um, you know, I mean they are an important time to you know, give testimony, but in terms of, you can always send an email to your legislator. <laughs> no, no, agreed. They, they, they also, but they said they wanted testimony by the 22nd, as written testimony by the 22nd. I don't know if, uh, all, yes, if, yes. if the committees can, ha can really limit that or... Well, after, um, 
generally after um, stuff might come in later, but basically it's, you know, they might use it or it might just be, well, this came in too late, so sorry. Okay. Yeah. And then, as you said, it's reaching out to the people on the committee. Mm -hmm. So what um, what do you think of this one so far? Chief Data Officer, I'll adhere to the following principles. Adherence to user-centric design. Wow, that's, that's new. Commitment to agile management. Okay. For open data platforms and data standardization. And commitment to the privacy of personally identifying information. Which I wonder when you think about voter records, but okay. that is technically public record unless you have a compelling reason not to include it, i.e. because you're being stopped, for example. Well, uh, well for, for something like voter records, the, um, you know, what you can see is whether an individual voted in a specific election. Um, these are, this information is very commonly people canvassing and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, in terms of, like, you know, actual ballots um, to the extent I have no object a ballot itself contains no per personally identifying information mm -hmm. um, to the extent that you know someone wants to scan copies of them or whatnot sure fine <laughs> um, in communities where ranked choice voting is becoming um, you know, is is under is exists or is under consideration. Have actual uh, vote record, you know, where it's the way each ballot was filled out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is you sort of need that information in order to like reproduce a you know account. Right. Um, so in there, there are lots of there are lots of useful things that you know come can come out of that. Having you know, to me the important thing that this bill, one of the important things that this bill is asking for is standardization, um, where you know you have you're saying that okay the information has to be specified in such a such a format. The federal Congress, the U.S. Congress, actually does a wonderful job at doing this. If you have they have, you know, very structured ways of recording and representing bills and that sort of thing. Um, all of it is machine readable, which means that you can, you know, a, you can program a computer to easily understand the structure of these documents, as opposed to having to, you know, go and read them and read them manually or um, what make guesses about structure based on things like formatting and whatnot. Um, I mean, Massachusetts, you know, if you take a, if, if you go to the gallery of the legislature and take a of the votes, they can expel you, if I recall correctly. Which I'm just like, and, and yet they'll have, they, like they usually do a roll call, but not, not always, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the eyes versus the nays type thing. Mm -hmm. But even, even the roll call, it's like, you can't photograph that, how mm -hmm. someone voted, which is not, you should be able to know what your, how your representative voted on a particular mm -hmm. issue. Is there not also not another way, there would probably another way to find out that, not another way to, it's the, you think it's just the I's versus the nays. It's just the end result of the total vote that you can. Uh, is well, I mean, if they do I's versus nays, then that's that's a voice vote, and you can't. I'm not sure if you need all party consent in a in a legislative hearing to record, um, which would be problematic. But um, but I feel like it's a public meeting. But even then, all you'd be measuring measuring is like the decibels. 
of eyes and nays. Uh, but no, the, the, it's like I, I have seen public votes enumerated of these people voted this way. I know it is being captured, but that you can't even verify that firsthand. Verify it firsthand, I think, is a problem. Yeah, I mean, from you know, from my uh, experiences serving on a town meeting, most of our votes are taken electronically. So there's you know, there's we have little handset handsets, and you press one for yes, two for no. Right. So, which is wonderful because at the end of the night, you have a record of how everyone voted. Um, and it's also good because when, you know, there's the whole huffery and puffery as things come up for consideration, a person says, well, we must support X. And you go back and look at their voting record and they say, oh, yeah, they voted against X a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> They're full of crap. <laughs> right. Um, but there are occasions where, uh, just for expediency, um, you know, we'll do things by voice vote. For example, if there's uh, an article where the recommendation is to uh, to do nothing, <laughs> um, you might do voice vote. And if there's a clear difference, um, fine. And in a town meeting setting. If you know the moderator who is facilitating the, the things, they can say, "Okay, yes, I agree." It's a, it sounds like it sounded like a yes. A few people can stand up and say, "No, we actually want to want to have it." Mm -hmm. So, the you know public meeting, what we call public meetings, are I mean, there's a difference between a public meeting and sort of like the common language sense and a an open meeting, um, which is you know. A legislative term and subject to Massachusetts open meeting law, the state legislature public meetings, but they are not bound. They are exempted from the OML. Yeah. So there are some things like, you know, they don't have to disclose <laughs> um, because they're not required to do so. Right. Yes. What is it? I think we're the only only state where the judiciary the legislative and the executive are all not subject to the mm -hmm. you know the public records law yeah and and it sounds like open meetings law too <laughs> oh yeah so i could be getting them i could be getting them confused. actually I, I think i'm not getting them confused i don't think they're subject to either but don't quote me on that. sure now as someone who served on a, a bunch of committees that you know uh, my town makes a, our policy is that working, groups working in, on a public thing should follow the open meeting law, even if the open meeting law doesn't, re, doesn't specifically require it. Um, and in order to, you know, so that means that you're, you know, allowing people to come in and observe um, what you're, what you're doing, which is good. It limits your ability to, to do work outside of a meeting context. So, you know, it's, it does make the process longer and slower, but you know, that's, a, that, you know, that's, that's okay. The other thing that open meeting law tends to do is, you know, it's got, it's got requirements to publish agendas, which is, that, you know, people know what a, 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 you know, a, a, a group is discussing. Um, the other thing it requires are publishing minutes, which, having been responsible for that job, it takes a couple of hours. <laughs> You'll have a two-hour meeting and to prepare minutes for it. Well, that's another four hours. <laughs> um, you know, transparency is. I feel like you should just record it and then do like speech to text and then just cut. There, there is, I mean, in order to do, you can't, I mean, that is a reasonable way to do it. Um, the, you know, speech to text, one of the things that general, generally will not do is it will not uh, do attribution. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a transcript, you not only have what was said, but who said it. So you're going to go have to go back and that. You're also going to have to listen to the thing again. And you know, well, either read, either proofread and correct, or listen and correct. 
um, because you know, I, I I'm I'm always enamored at how some of the uh, the the tra transcription software makes either because of there's background noise or because you know someone speaks with an accent <laughs> or they speak quietly or whatever. They save work, but they don't eliminate the need for sort of like um, sort of like manual human quality control. So uh, recently the Joint Committee on the Judiciary met on July 18th, and then apparently there was some incident at the, legis at the State House, um, and they canceled the meeting like an hour in. So they're going to have another one, so maybe we should go over those All right, sure. bills. For example, I mean, there's an act relative to selling tattooing. I think we can. Youth Restorative Justice Fund. Honest employees. Protecting honest employees by creating construction private attorney general action. Uh, or this, this one, uh, H1415, an act to increase the penalty for school tardiness. We view the tax. So uh, that is very simple. It is section two cha of chapter seventy six of the general laws is hereby amended in line five by striking the words "be punished by a fine of not more than twenty dollars" and inserting in place thereof the following words: "be punished by a fine of not more than fifty dollars for each day that the child does not attend school," which just punitive and going to going to be used on poor people. Yeah, I agree. People of color more than anything else, which is interesting that this is suggested by a person of color. But anyways, uh, at least to the best of my knowledge. There's an act banning the use of tear gas by law enforcement. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, that's, that's my that's comment. Like I, I say yes. <laughs> Act relative to civil rights, H fourteen forty. Name of the list that you're looking at. Up, some kind of upcoming bills, or what type of bills is this? Okay, so here it is. is. They don't need the events, hearings, detail. Joint Commission on Industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Act protecting employee free speech. Ooh, that's good. It's 1543. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, another a similarly named act, um, or it's S958. It's uh, from Lydia Edwards. So I'm, I'm curious to look at that. Yeah, I think the one I'm looking at is the house for me. Uh, okay. That is H1543. Ah. Do you want to look on with me? 
<laughs> Sorry, it's a rough one. I, 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 I don't know how to navigate. Like, I'm out of. I'm just sorry. Yeah, no worries. Look on. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get on. Committee on the Judiciary. Is that relevant? Okay. That is that we were looking at this was the hearing, and okay. then if you look at it, it has all of the bills okay. that are appearing. Okay. And so at the moment, can you? No, I found it. Yeah, no. great. great. Okay. Uh, so H1543, just reading through. So basically, it's like if your boss says you have to listen to their speech. And you say no, you can't discipline them. Uh, and be liable to such employee for damages caused by such discipline or discharge, including punitive damages and for reasonable attorney's fees as part of the cost of such actions for damages and the full amount of gross loss of weighted compensation with costs and such reasonable attorney's fees in this court. On the face of it, it looks fine. Ah, but the religious exemption. So if you work for a religious organization, then they then you have then, to listen. Then, then, then you have to listen. <laughs> Well, I mean, Ah, yes, an act relative to civil asset forfeiture improvements. Well, that's from a Republican, so I'm curious. Which one is this? H1577. Hmm. Yeah, civil asset, you, they can steal your stuff. <laughs> and the only, and, and by suing your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not you <laughs> no and they don't have to convict you they can just be like yeah the stuff was used in the committing of a crime or is the proceeds of a crime no we did not convict the individual in question <laughs> but let's have this twenty thousand dollars that you were transporting from one part of massachusetts to another or well, steal your well, house <laughs> well the, the the opening paragraph is is, is good in in the sense that it's striking uh, the words, the Commonwealth shall have the burden of proving to the court the existence of probable cause, and with the Commonwealth shall have the burden of proving to the court beyond a reasonable doubt. <laughs> so, the, all right, uh, keep reading, but, you know, this, we're off to a good start here. I still feel like you need a conviction in order to do it. Mm -hmm. 
not about it being aimed or oriented around drug, uh, drug rehabilitation, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Also, the money, so basically the money goes into this special fund. It isn't like now where a police, police department take your stuff and they get the money, money. that they can put that, in their that's own actually, fund. That's actually, that's another good improvement. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's not just a state fund. It's a state fund for a specific use. Right. Um, you know, rehabilitation, health treatment, prevention, and education programs. Oh, it says the attorney general, each district attorney, and each police department for which the state treasurer has established a special public attorney and drug rehabilitation trust fund. So is there a trust fund for each of those, or is there one overall trust fund? It's... Because I feel like if there's a trust fund for either of those, mm-hmm. that for any one in particular, any one of these groups, then it's still a way that they can create the little slush fund. It's set now the state treasurer oversees where that that money is still earmarked for them, which well, is still it's, problematic. But right? but it does it is earmarked for well even if it is earmarked for them, it's still limited in there's it's still there's a specific purpose requirement. You know, you can't use the money to go buy, you know, an armored vehicle, for example. <laughs> I mean the the feds just give those things away. Right? Uh, that's true. Create our own SWAT team and ask for one. A SWAT corporation. Okay, break down how the money was distributed from the trust fund was used and see the specific details. List of expenditures. Trust fund, including the name of the payee, the date of the payment, the purpose of the payment. Well, that's good. The value of at least three thousand is seized by law enforcement agent for wrongful forfeiture and is charged with seizing it. Shall promptly proceed against the contraband article. Filing complaints for court within the jurisdiction for the seizure of the offense or the offense occurred. Fine, given thousand dollars. So if it's under three thousand dollars, you don't have to pay the filing fee or the bond. So when they hit up kids for their lunch money, you uh, shall impose a mandatory stay for any civil forfeiture proceedings until the criminal case related to the seized property has been fully adjudicated. They shall remain in effect until the defendant has been convicted, acquitted. Or had charges against them dismissed or until the time of the prosecution expired. They so shall also apply to any appeals of the criminal case unless otherwise explicitly agreed in writing, but the parties bond shall be payable to all claimants if the claims prevail in the forfeiture. Okay, so that's Have you read, like, it's saying it's altering this subject in D of Section 47 of 94C. Is that original document something that you're already familiar with from having read it before, or? No. Okay. I mean, that's the Massachusetts General Laws, which are published. Um, you can go to malegislature.gov, and they should be published there, um, amongst other places. I mean, ideally, it would be good to load those into, like, and then be able for each of these bills to do a, a branch yeah. <laughs> of like all Person the different control. changes. Um, right. And then be able to have kind of, I want to be able to do the diff, be, you know, yeah. what is changing? Oh, before it was this, now go. it's that. Like that would be. Right. Do the diff from before the meeting and after the meeting or whatnot. Right. Mm-hmm.
No, no, it's fine. So then how about like, um, in general, it's not, how familiar are you with the, the general laws then as a whole? You've read here and there and around, in and around. And so, because I'm just reading this and it says what's changed, but I'm sort of like, okay, but I don't know really how it was before. So. Right, right. Is this a change in improvement or is this change, uh, you know. That's negative. my job is I need to read up and keep, right. keep up on it. But it isn't, yeah, they don't make it easy, as I said. It's not like I can go and be like, oh, here's the text of the bill. And by the way, here's the text in the context of it changes this law and it changes that law. And, it changes, and here's the, you know, striped out section with the new right. section. Right. So. You like that it's, well, if you, you just have to click through it, just like maybe three, four, five levels, and it's available. Yeah. This is. Right, so right. That's right. nice, at least, bro. Right. So this is how like we're doing section, what is it? Part two of this meeting was going to be to look for bills, right? Right. So that's what we're, is that what we're yeah, doing? Yeah, that's what we're, we're doing, yeah. Here's another good one, an act establishing a right to counsel in civil asset forfeiture cases. <laughs> Although I'm like, well, doing your stuff, <laughs> is the counsel for your stuff or like... Your, I, I guess it means your stuff can have a public defender. Yeah, well. So let me, um, here, so as we talked before we started this meeting, um, there was the national idea was camera mapping event somewhere around September 11th. Um, I know we've had them in the past. Uh, we've talked about, you know, get call contacting supporters and asking them to run for office and organizing locally. Um, are those efforts that you would be either of them interested in helping with or? I don't know. I don't know. I want to give my bearings more. Uh, as I, yeah, at some point, but I, think in the next week or a few weeks, I need to give my bearings. Sure. Urgently. And then before I start acting or trying to like persuade others to act, I mm -hmm. want to really sort of like, uh, I want to consume and process and yep. get my bearings. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> so not this week is the answer. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's a little How bit of that? summer, How about so, that? you know. Uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, how about you? What are you doing on that front? Or, like, have you done on that front? Or what are you doing on that front? Well, you're holding this meeting, obviously. That, and then... Yeah, I mean, um, you're holding this meeting... Or other people in the party. Or others in the party. What are people doing on that? Uh, I mean, we have our... our meetings every two weeks where we kind of plan things out. Uh, we're having these conferences about once a quarter. Um, you know, as I said, we'll probably have an event in September uh, to do the, the camera mapping. I was checking to see it. Um, and then, um, you know, the, so the legislative elections begin uh, you can start gathering signatures in February of 2024. And you have 10 weeks in which to gather your signatures. 150 of you want to run for state rep. And um, 200, yeah, sorry, 300 if you want to run for state senate. And that's actual signatures, not raw signatures. Usually it takes some larger number before. And you also want to have a cushion of like, 50 to 100 signatures just so that if your competitor challenges you, you have a cushion that if they're like, oh, well, there's a stray mark on this nomination paper, thus we disqualify the entire nomination paper, um, you still have, it's like, oh, okay, I lose 10. Like, I still have, you know, 180. Now, usually they don't, but it has been done in the 
So between now and February is uh, talking with supporters and asking if they want to run for office or if they've identified that they wanted to run for office, talking with them. So that's something that we should be doing August, September, October, probably at the latest, having training for people. Um, I know we have at least one person who's uh, likely to run for state representative uh, next year. In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Yes. Oh, that's nice. uh, and we have had candidates in the past. Uh, we have, we've had two in Somerville. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, one in Bellingham. Bellingham, thank you. Uh, and then we had one up in, I think, Lower La Lawrence years ago who yeah. didn't get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like organically growing, the, the, based on the, our beliefs and what we believe in, trying to gr find out how to grow the Pirate Party, find out who would be willing to run for office mm -hmm. as, a, as a member of the party, and then training them and supporting them, you know, helping to make sure they get on the ballot. So there's, you know, in terms of getting on the ballot, there's a number, you, you have 10 weeks and there's different approaches. The one that I find most effective is essentially to go door starting in your neighborhood and working out wow. and just literally knocking on doors and being like, Hey, I'm running for office. I'd like your signature on my nomination paper so I can just be on the ballot. You don't have to vote for me. If you don't want to, but at least you have another choice. It's not just your standard Democrat or Republican who's there. Um, and usually, you know, it's 150 people for state rep. So it's not, it's not a big, um, it's, it's not difficult. It's just, you know, like every weekend going out for a few hours, knocking on doors, um, or during the week or something like that. And if you put the hours in, it's just a numbers game. You'll you'll go and you'll get on the ballot. And the nice thing is there are different ways of campaigning. Uh, you can you can go on with the aim. I'm going to win. I'm going to raise thirty thousand dollars. I'm going to have hundreds of volunteers. We're going to knock on all the doors. We're going to have a coordinated campaign, and and you can do that. And and we fully support people who do that. Um, but you can also run something where it's, I'm going to go and I can't, I have a family. So all I can only do so many hours and it's like, okay, that's fine. Do what you can do, but use it effectively. So like knock on doors, you know, and say, okay, I can only do certain amounts of it, which means I can only walk this one precinct. Okay. Then just walk that one precinct. Right. Or you can get the voter rolls and you can be like, okay, I'm only going to knock on the precincts of anyone under 30. <laughs> right? For example, figuring they're younger, they're more likely to be supportive of pirates. Um, and then be able to, you know, have, have a strategy. Go on and stand on the sidewalk and publicly in front of certain areas where you think people who you, you, your type of people are going to be walking by is that legitimate or is that not so i think that's legitimate <laughs> that's legitimate if you were running statewide okay. i think if you're running in a district the problem is like i'll give you an example we had one candidate on the ballot and they had like a week before the signatures were due and they weren't going to get on mm -hmm. and so we went down that weekend and we went to a walmart mm -hmm. we figured there's going to be a lot of people at a walmart so we went to the walmart and we gathered some signatures. The problem is, for every one person who was in the district, uh, you'd get, like, I don't even remember, Steve, there were like three or four yeah, people yeah. who were uh, from somewhere else, because it's a Walmart, and a Walmart has a big catchment area. <laughs> and, uh, and so you're going to get people from all over, or New Hampshire, or, or, or Rhode Island, or whatever. They were down the south. And Connecticut. So... We, after a few hours of that, we changed our strategy. We said, you know what? Let's go really local. Let's instead go to your, go to where you live, go to your, your street, and then fan out. And so we had, you like, what? We had like four or five people. And we just were like, okay, I'm going to walk down this street. 
The other person's going to walk down the other side of the street. And then we just kind of went through and, and, you know, we stayed out of each other's hair. We didn't like, you didn't want to knock on a door, right? Because A, that's not efficient. And B, you know, they're like, oh yeah, you know, you don't seem very confident because another person came to my door within minutes of the first person. Like, don't you know how to do this? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were able to get the candidate like the 120s. And so that then over the last two days, his people in his campaign were able to like get the rest of the signatures to, to get on the ballot. Okay. So I guess it's, 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 it's um, one goal is to get, you know, additional people running. And it, so what, what about their existing candidate? What's their name or? or they haven't announced no, yet. So announced we'll, yet. we'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so over the next few months, we have to put together a plan and start reaching out to people and training them and, and getting them, getting them active on that. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, no, it, it is a lot of it's work. It's time working. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, um. But it, yeah. right? and, and so the, the thing about Massachusetts is, as I said sometime earlier, you know, on average, 60% of all legislators in the Massachusetts General Court, as we call our legislature, don't have a competitor in the general election. So if it comes to a pirate and a Democrat or a pirate and a Republican, there are going to be people in the other party who are just going to be like, ah, oh, I've got it. I've got an alternative. <laughs> as long as they don't, as long as they don't sound like a, a Nazi or a crazy person, I'll vote for them. Sure. <laughs> you know, maybe they, because of districting, Republicans have that district locked up, right? They know they're going to get their 55% or 60%, but that's okay. The pirate can, can do well as well. I mean, I, I ran in, 2006 for treasurer of Massachusetts, and it was just me and the, the incumbent Democrat who I also ran against in 2002. But um, I was running as a Green Rainbow Party member at the time. And when I looked at the polls, it was like it wasn't Democrats who were voting for me, it was Republicans. Uh, and Exactly, they, exactly. Uh, I see. Um, but still, I got, you know, over 20%, I got 16% of the vote. So doubled what I got the previous four years. So, you know, there's, there's something to be said for that. And for me, um, we have an uphill battle, right? We have an ossified political system, not even just nationwide, well, in Massachusetts, literally, it's this it went from Republican, it went to Democrat, um, and 80% of the legislature, if not more, are Democrats, although they're like really Republicans, they're just not crazy Republicans. <laughs> I've been seeing stuff yeah. like, recently people are saying, um, people are claiming they're more like a center Democrat, or oh, I'm a center Republican, but it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm like, pir pirates are a different breed than a libertarian or a green. You know, we certainly have beliefs in participatory democracy. Like, that's one of, like, we believe everyone should have privacy. We believe government needs to be transparent. We believe we need to have a participatory, not just, we need to make our election system more representative, say, uh, proportion representation or ranked choice voting or something like that. Um, but also, we need, more people need to be involved. And, um, you know, those are issues at, at all levels, you know, at, at not just not just governmental level, but people need more say in how they work as well. Okay. Um, and that's going to take a while to get there. But if candidates, you know, a candidate could theoretically be just on the ballot and they do nothing else. That's an achievement. 
if they want to make sure that they attend all of the debates, great. That's that 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 would be <clears throat> that is that is useful as well. At least there'll be people there and they'll hear hear what they have to say. If they want to do standouts, holding signs in public places like once once a week, great. If they want to door knock on like their precinct, great. Their ward, great. Their whole city, town, or or like you know if it's like a you know like. Like in, in increasingly larger areas, ultimately, you know, if they want to go whole hog, or I'm going to run to win, by all means, do that. But simply being able to, like, if you're a candidate running, and at the end of it, you've identified 10 people <clears throat> who want to be actively involved in building the Pirate Party, that is an achievement, even if you lose. Right? And so from that, two years or in towns would be the next year there'll be municipal elections and so you could take some of those volunteers or the candidate could run in those elections and so it's a building process but it's getting people to to do that so <clears throat> um okay so Oh, Steve, you find any other bills? They're, they're skimming through. There's um, one of the challenges with these is that. <clears throat> By the way, Steve is is our main office holder. He's a town <laughs> in Arlington, such as it town is. Town member. Town, town meeting, meeting member. member. They've elected town meeting. Some towns are open town meeting. Any any voter can show up at town meeting and vote larger towns like Arlington, like Amherst used to be, like Brookline still. Brookline still, but yeah, used to be, yeah. they're, 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 they have, they are, they have or are in the process of forming a, a city charter committee. Oh, charter. they are? Okay. So it looks like Brookline is going to go the way of going to become a city, which for a community of over 50,000 people, it's, it really is a city. You know, functionally, it is a city, and but what does that give them? Because you know, you you look at like I look at Somerville. We've got a very strong mayor system, mm -hmm. and the city council they have limited power, right? And so I feel like the town meeting, even if it's representative town meeting, still has more power than the select board. Like, I don't feel like that, that ratio is, of, of the power dynamic is better in an elected town meeting with a select board, with a strong mayor, and a whole administrative state below them, and like the city council that's like, yeah, yay, nay on the bill budget, and that's it, right? Part of it, um, there, I, I think there are a couple of, couple of differences. Um, one notable one is... Brookline, like, Brook, Brookline doesn't have, um, you know, their town meeting, they, when you're, when you're a large town, you know, you've got kind of population somewhere in the 40, 50 range. Um, with that comes a certain amount of legislative complexity. And trying to find 200 and some people who you know, understand it and will dig into it can be a challenge. Not only that, there's also the time commitment mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, three hours a night, two nights a week for some number of weeks, some number of times a year. So, it, so a, how many times, <clears throat> like I know for town meeting, that's usually in, like why couldn't that be spread over the whole year? So part of it is... Like I know it's like it's a concentrated period of time mm -hmm. as opposed to like city council, which is they meet regularly every Tuesday or right. every it other is a, Tuesday or something. Is right. And I don't know so one of the <clears throat> one of the quirks of town meeting <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little hoarse this morning. One of the quirks of town meeting is so there um one is 
the sort of threshold for for getting something before the the body. So on an annual town meeting, you need ten signatures to get some article. As anything that's not part of the annual is a special town meeting, and you need a hundred. So mm -hmm. there's there's a different threshold there. Um, the other, you know, the other sort of different dynamic is if you are a town, the attorney general, attorney general's office will review everything you you, you do, mm -hmm. um, and you know they can come back and say, yeah, you pass this, but it's not enforceable, so <laughs> sure. you cannot enforce it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Whereas cities, you have the presumption of knowing what you're doing. <laughs> see, okay, but so that you have to be sued in that case, in the case mm -hmm. of the city, as opposed to the yeah. attorney general being like, no, that yeah, no, no. I mean, part of it is so town meeting is a fairly inefficient form of government. Um, I know we like it in New England, but you know, it, it hasn't exactly caught on in other parts of the country, right? You know, and one of the reasons it's inefficient is because it's it's a slow deliberative process, mm -hmm. and sometimes, but you know, you know, taking time to consider what you're doing is good. Mm -hmm. There's a capacity issue. You know, it limits what you're able to do. You know, and especially the the scenario where, you know, okay, you have it, your annual town meeting once a year. The dynamic things is, you know, once a year you kind of have this crunch where you work on your legislature, legis legislative proposals, you bring them forward, and if they're, um, you know, it's not like, and if it doesn't work out, you have to work here. And city councils can be more proactive. They, I, I, they, I feel like they have more say in shaping the legislation that it goes where with town meeting you basically you have hearings where the legislative you know where somebody considers the thing and you know the actual text of the legislation gets written town meeting can amend things sure but in the majority of the cases it's just an up or down vote that that's that's a, that's it <laughs> Whereas the city council could go back and be like, this isn't quite what we want. Mm -hmm. Let's, here are the objections to it. Can you go back and mm -hmm. edit it and then bring it back? To right. Us? So the city council could have a working session with, um, you know, departments in the community, with other boards in the community. Town meeting doesn't have working sessions. <laughs> you know, you get up there, you, you, you could ask questions, and a lot of the time that's a very good way to, you know, learn or teach other people in the room about what something is doing, but, you know, it's not a, it is, it's a process of creating, yeah, are we going to do this or not, as opposed to actually constructing um, policy. But, um... How about for how does the pirate party's outlook on and the candidates up and or does the pirate party's outlook mm -hmm. on funding like is people it seems like it's volunteer based and people are gonna have to just provide their own funding like the candidates pretty much are gonna have to fund themselves and the supporters are gonna volunteer and fund themselves and even everyone in this room everyone in the pirate party has to fund themselves mm -hmm. strong feelings about like trying to. You know, like Republicans and Democrats, they like have funding flowing through the party somehow, I thought. Or to some degree, yeah. Or so like is that like not a what are the things from feeling on that? So um, so Massachusetts is limited we can as a party, we can give up to five hundred dollars per to a candidate per year. Um, we can only accept five hundred dollars from up to five hundred dollars from an individual inside the well, actually any, any citizen or permanent resident. So inside, well, whether they're as long as they're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, but they can be from 
any state. They could be living outside. It doesn't matter. Um, even if the party, even if the party had a lot of funds somehow, you donate a lot of money to any candidate because you can donate five hundred dollars to the candidate. But what could you do? What if somehow the par the party got funding? You could, could you could just have like events, like comp like more like conferences in a bigger setting or something. Is that not on the radar? I mean, what's I mean, that? that's certainly something that that we could do if 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 we. I mean, we have the funding for our needs at the moment. Obviously, we'd want to do more, um, you know, having more literature, uh, you know. I mean, the nice thing about this space is it is a public space that any person in the public, at least Somer okay. Somerville, can use. Okay. And since I'm a resident of Somerville. Um, but there are other, you know, so that's that's useful. We don't need to, to do that. We, we have had conferences that were... Like we had a community church years ago in Boston. Uh, we've had a couple there, and they they charge a fee. Or like at the Democracy Center, which is where our first conference was, they okay. they charge a fee. So the so one thing about um, the conference would be it's in very important. It's in a public space. And I mean, we we have free, it. We have free to attend. It's sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we do. You know, we as I said, we we've had. Is that? Hi there. Hello. How are you doing? It is, yes. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Did you uh, well, they're having a pirate party. Hello? They are. Can you do that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're a dinosaur party. <laughs> Take care. Uh, for those of you who know, someone just saying hello with their job. Um, okay. I gotta, I should just, I'm just get more. Thanks for fielding my questions, basically. Sure. Um, but, you know, that's even like having $500 to do a startup. Um, you know, yes, $500 so you can pay for literature and you can do various other stuff would be would be useful. So I don't even know. So part of the, I should say, and or, is the Pirate Party actually, like, kind of strong that there should be no money through no party money flowing through the park. I don't even know because I'm new <laughs> to this. Because, yeah. So was I mean, it a we're, we're question such, to ask? We're such low fry with like, like if we were, if, if we had 1% of all registered voters, then we would be considered a, um, we'd be a ballot qualified party. And so we could, it hasn't happened yet because we don't have 1%. Um, that's another thing that, that we should be focusing on is going out and registering people. Um, and that would increase our limit to like $5,000 of what we could raise per person. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, if you get more members in the party, then it changes for the number. Yeah, so the, for Massachusetts, the way you become ballot qualified is you either run a candidate for statewide office who gets 5% of the vote, or you register 1% of all voters in your political designation. So only the Democrats and Republicans have the 1% threshold. The Libertarians have not quite gotten close enough. I think they got to like 15 or 20,000 maybe, but they never quite got to like the 40 or 50,000 it would be. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's 4 million, so 1% would be like 40,000. Um, but don't pull me on that. And then I know that I know the Greens never got to that, um, and unfortunately we haven't yet either. So um, we also have limitations, like we don't run people for statewide office until we're a ballot qualified party, just because we want it. Like you look at the European pirate parties, and due to the nature of them. They, they're generally parliamentary. The, you know, they run people for parliament either in a proportional representation system or as individual candidates. Um, and they don't, like presidents aren't always elected, for example. Uh, you know, in the UK, there's, they're, you know, they don't have a president, they get a king. Um, and others, you know, others are, are monarchies that where the 
It's a figurehead. Um, I, France, I think, is one of the few that um, elects their president. Like mm -hmm. Ireland elects their well, actually, Ireland does elect their president, but it's a um, and others. It's the you know the Senate that elects. Like I think Germany. It's not elected by everyone. I think it's like the Senate elects their president. So my, my point is our approach is to focus on legislative uh, elections. So the House is the highest holder. Sorry. Oh, so, so, legislative elections. Right. So anything, House. anything U.S. House or lower. So it could be U.S. House. It could be theoretically Governor's Council. Mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. could be... Mass, Massachusetts Senate or House. It could be county offices, sheriffs. We need pirates to run for sheriff. <laughs> um, and and of course, it's city and towns. Okay. Oh yeah, I was going to say. And are you is are you representing a party as your what was it town council or town meeting meeting first member? So yeah, town meeting member. So I'm a member of the local legislature. Um, our elections are nonpartisan, which oh. is it's it's a little weird to have nonpartisan political processes. <laughs> but, but, most cities and towns are nonpartisan. Yeah. I think I want to say like Massachusetts does allow a partisan city, but I don't think any cities have partisan. Mm. Uh, elections mm -hmm. so but yeah i'm i'm you know a small time town politician pirate <laughs> other questions yeah i should have a lot of questions i have are just around how how state government works. And so it's kind of like, I don't, you're gracious to, if you can, if I'm asking those type of questions to answer those because. I mean, we're recording this. So if you don't, if, if you, you know, if you have them, other people have them. So oh yeah. yeah. By okay. all means. Well, I'll probably have one in the next 60 seconds to five minutes, but. Okay. I a, one of the things that I've, um, you know, I, I know how to follow what hap what sort of happens in Congress um, during schedules and, and votes and that sort of thing. I know how to follow what happens in like local government, um, you know, and the framework Massachusetts has for the different types of local governments, you know, that co combined with that you can basically figure out what they're doing and or how to find information. I've always found the state government somewhat impenetrable <laughs> where, you know, you, I kind of rely on, I think it's designed that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to, For me, it's it's hard to understand. I, I just I don't even have a, a, a really good sense for the timelines. I know that you know legislatures they de tend to follow an annual. Is it actually is it is it's annual, biannual? Right? It's biannual, yeah. So every two years, right? Um, and you'll have things that come up, and then there's usually a crunch at the end, and some stuff gets done, and some stuff doesn't. Um, so we we actually. Uh, for those who will see this on YouTube, website, we will link or otherwise embed a video by Alex Matthews of, uh, <clears throat> of warrantless.org, uh, amongst other things, um, where he talks about the problems with the legislature. But mm -hmm. it's all like hearings, for example. Um, you get very... They don't schedule them well in advance. You may get a week notice that a mm -hmm. hearing is coming up and it's going to deal with these bills. Um, that's problematic, right? It could be like, yeah, we're going to deal with these bills in a month and get all your stuff together. Um, 
the bills basically you have until i think so that after the, the january halfway through the january after the election um you can propose your bill and now anyone can bill so i could write a bill and i could be like legislature here you have this um if i recall correctly and it will go nowhere i mean to be honest most bills go nowhere but it will definitely go nowhere you can go to your legislature legislator and deal and and say hey i have this bill i've written this would you submit it and they'll submit it they may not co-sponsor it but they'll at least be like yep it's on the record um and so those will have their appropriate hearing um committee votes are not recorded so what will usually happen with a lot of bills as steve alluded to is they'll sit there for months if not almost two years and then at the end it's like Okay, uh, we have put it to study, which basically means it is put out to the pasture. We are not going to do anything with it. And others will be uh, voted on and approved and go before the legislature, though there's usually not many of those. And then others will get repackaged and stuck into another bill, mm -hmm. like appropriations, which has to pass, um, and will get done. I mean, I like... The, the stock example of, of how the system both can work really fast and is broken is there was some guy who um, took photographs of women um, on public transit. And it turned out there was no law, and, and it, it is, shall we say, compromising. Um, and that wasn't against the law. So when it came before the, the, the Massachusetts Supreme Court, they were like, there's no law against this. We have to throw it out. The legislature moved so fast, take a bill and vote on it, and say, okay, that's now illegal. And that said, certain things are illegal. So, for example, you can't stick a camera under a person's dress, for example. Uh, but you could sh you could photograph uh, down a woman's cleavage because that's part that's public, right? Um, but the point was they moved. There was enough of an outcry Popular. that they moved really fast. Popular topic. Right. And there's a lot of public opinion and everything. Right. But, you know, our, meanwhile, are we adequately funding the MBTA? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, those things don't, you know, right. so a lot of other things move like molasses and don't, aren't done in an orderly way, uh, or at least, and certainly not in a transparent way. But, anyways, mm -hmm. Alex has a video we have a video of that from alex and it kind of goes over all i mean all, oftentimes we also have a system that is very the speaker of the house and the president of the senate if they don't want a bill to pass they can basically veto it we have a very the speaker has a lot of power the president of the senate have a lot of power and so oftentimes it will be, well, we will deal with this because these two people say yes. Right? And that's not... Right. Um, that's not the best of systems. And, and even then, the, the Speaker of the House usually has more power than the Senate. You have 160 House members and 40 senators. Technically, they're co-equal branches of government they have joint like it's the joint committee on the judiciary right right it, it's not the yeah so it's it's the joint committee of the judiciary so that's oh, okay. the, so that you, you already have a four to one ratio between the senate and the house mm -hmm. 
I think that's, I don't, I don't know that, like, I think they, you know, the, the, the house, my, I guess my point is I, I believe the house can kind of override mm -hmm. the Senate or not, since mm -hmm. it's a joint committee. Let me ask Whereas you. like U S U S Congress, there's us, there are Senate committees and there are house committees and they come up with, they jointly decide that and come up with a bill that goes before their respective uh, bodies. And then they have to, you know, then the, the bill goes from the house to the Senate or the Senate to the house and the, well, actually, this is even more complex. So, going back to the state, yeah, this yeah. is Massachusetts. So, the first, if you want to look at committees and commissions, the first thing you have to know is whether it's a Senate committee, a House committee, or uh, a joint committee. Right. <laughs> so, apparently, we have both. Um, all right. So, let's look at House committee. And there are only there are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are only eleven of these. Wow. Now how many Senate committees are there? There are also eleven. And they seem to be about the same. And then so Which one are you looking at? I'm just Looking under committees, so I looked under Senate committees and House committees. Now I'm going to look at joint. Oh, I see. Yeah, committees and commissions. Yeah, joint. We have lots of them. Okay. Yeah, a lot of joint. And of course, you know, a committee could approve it and then it could like, no, we're going to send it to this other committee, which, you know, may, may make sense, you know, not, not, there, there are bills that are going to have, like if a bill has a revenue implication, like we want to give more money to police. So that goes to public safety and have to go to revenue and bid, or I don't think it was an expenditure. So I think it's revenue, right? And then they would have to approve. So, ways in the committees. Committees being made up of representatives or senators. Joint committees have both. So, yeah, representatives and senators. But again, it's not trend. We don't even know how the, which is, you know, it's, it's hard because it's not public. If you usually you have to put it, if you want to get a bill through, you'll have to put it through several, uh, several sessions, right? You'll put it in the first time and you'll get some support maybe. And then, but it won't get, it'll get voted out um to study and then you reintroduce it the next year and maybe you take some complaint you, you know <clears throat> you, you you don't you you try and amend it but you don't know how people voted unless you have a friend legislator who tells you that um so you don't know it's like how do we tweak the bill to get this person to vote on it and then how since we Third party is interested in the legislature and the state, perhaps in state, senate, and bills. Uh, but what, sorry, what actions are is the party and the people in the party taking? How, what kind of influence do, do mm -hmm. people in the party and the party have on like the state, the bills, and stuff? Do, does that all need to be done through like a election like that's a parent party state representative? Or can the just party members directly as individuals have effect onto bills? I mean, we can advocate for bills, so we can submit testimony as the as a representative of the party. We so, did that for Green Choice Voting uh, Bill. Um, I submitted testimony on, as chair of the Massachusetts Prior Party. Um, other people have, um, you know, we we can always. Urge other people to submit testimony. I we need can, to learn what that is because it keeps coming up. I saw it on the website and then before the meeting, mm -hmm. we're talking about submitting testimony. Right. 
Yeah, so right. we found out that you can submit online. You don't have to stay email. And, and as a tracking process. What does it mean, submit testimony? It, it sounds like you're adding support of some kind. But yeah, I don't know what that means. So it's, a, it's, it's basically it's a document that mm -hmm. is detailing whether you support or oppose a particular piece of legislation. As an Anyone can, as an individual. Yeah, the word testimony is very fancy sounding, but it's it's basically just you know a letter or a memo s s stating your position, saying what you think. <laughs> who would it, who would I? It, what comes to mind is back some decades ago, the governor, I think Mitt Romney, was there was a big question about ESL classroom and mm -hmm. funding or legislation or something, and then some so some my my neighbors were actually writing letters or something or that's what came to my mind but so who do you write the letter to like who who, who do you submit the testimony to to a person they usually have aides they, they have a, so so there is a system online um who that i just found like, out sorry i'm really ignorant about this so that's okay. there is state uh, representatives uh, the aid of a single representative or the aid of a single senator mm -hmm. or Aid of a party, Usually, it's of the committee. Aid of a governor. Like so, in other words, whomever's I, I think it's whomever's chair of the committee has an aid, okay. or each of them has an aid, and then you can send to that aid, who's kind of you sending it to the chair or to the committee actually gets it. Yeah, basically. So in other words, what, like for example, you know, so if we look at this hearing. And it says here the chair will limit testimony to three minutes. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, you provide the linked form by July sixteenth, uh, or you can email to michael.musto at mahouse.com, or you can you can snail mail it, and they give you an address. You can okay. <clears throat> so you you can you can either. So if you, during the hearing, if you wanted to have your three minutes, um, you can, you know, fill out the linked form and go and just put your name in. It used to be that, and probably, so there's, now that we're in a, now that the pandemic once the pandemic happened, they moved a lot of these meetings online, and now they do. You can go to the actual committee, and they also you can also submit testimony online, and so they they do that as well. All right. So I mean, it's it's a way of of having your voice, but we don't have any transparency into whether they're going to choose the bill or not is the problem. So as a pirate, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive should not be, for example, above the open meeting law or above the public records laws or things like that. Those should apply. Can I, can I as a person go? I can't. It's sounding like I can't go and attend in person. You can go. Yeah, anyone can go. Vote. So oh, the vote. Or this vote. So anyone can. So my anyone can. So you can. So the. Okay. There are no like. I can I, learn on my own. No, no, no. Yeah. It's fine. I'm happy. I'm happy so the hearings, anyone can go. Anyone can speak. Anyone gets three minutes. Okay. Um, and the hearings are organized on a particular day. These are the set of bills that we will do. So you don't want to speak on a set of bills that are not on the list for that hearing. Um, anyone can go, you can participate online, you can participate in person, uh, you can have your, you can submit written testimony for more than three minutes, whatever. Um, anyone can go to the legislature when they're in session and listen to what happens, listen to what is said. Um, you can't record it. I, I believe to the best of my knowledge you can't certainly you can't like I couldn't come there with a nice telephoto lens on my camera and go and take well, like when they do the vote I can't take a picture of that I will be escorted <laughs> you know, so I could sit there and I could write all of them down but I can't take a picture which I don't understand 
Yeah, I so. think the key for the key for that is to just make a little form that has the name of everybody on it. Exactly, <laughs> and then just check, check, and then check, you check, just check. check. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's that's actually a good way. You could have such a form. Is like to what extent or not valuable uh, degree? Of, is it for people from the pirate party to go and like attend hearings? In person and just observe and like maybe report on that or that's not something that we do in the private party very much or because i know I that mean, it's up to individuals many... who want to do that if this who wants to do that and be like here is my and here is my record of this hearing although the hearings do tend to be uh they're now reported some like i know for i know like the the rcv hearing i know that was reported um, and other ones have been recorded. So there's less of a need of that, but it, you know, if you wanted to show up to a hearing and like live, live, you mean, live sure tweet, you yeah. can live tweet. I think you can actually record. I think hearings you can actually record. Audio. Even on, well, it's a public, oh, it's right. public so you can do audio oh. and you don't have to like, you're holding up a camera and thus the, the fact that you're holding up the camera or a phone or something like that kind of signifies that you are you don't have to necessarily announce it it's a public meeting right? um it's only the a lot of the main the actual stronger things that we're working on are the cctv stuff right. and then the sort of going out and finding candidates and and, and organizing our, local chapters yeah. learning and teaching and stuff like yeah I mean, we've done crypto parties in the past, teaching people how to protect their privacy online. Not as much since the pandemic. Privacy, yes. Yeah. Online privacy. Hey, Joe, do you have anything to add? I guess Joe's just listening. Around. <laughs> Busy as always. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, so I've been listening. I just uh, don't have anything useful to add. Okay. No worries. Thanks, Joe. Uh, so it's twelve ten. Do we want to just wrap it up? I think that's yeah. That way we can clear things up. So um, for those okay, who take are that back. This... I do have something. Oh please, oh, go. go for it, Joe. Uh, so we're doing the camera mapping event coming up in September. Can we organize That's to do fun. it in another state like New Hampshire or Connecticut or New Jersey? You know, and drum up interest down there. Uh, I mean, we could certainly organize something with with pirates in New Hampshire. If we could reach out to them and see if they wanted to organize something and encourage people. Like you could do something where. Saturday is in New Hampshire, like I think, and then the you know September 11th would be in like Boston or something like that, or we could have Sunday could be in Worcester. We could have a set of events. You know, we don't. What I was thinking yeah, is maybe we can do like a news where we just do a live news and we go down and stream it and say, hey, how do you think is the best way to annoy your legislators? By the way, that's 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 the video. It's annoy your legislators for freedom. It's uh, <laughs> Alex Marthy's video. So. Um, I mean, we could certainly do that and talk with people about it. We could just organize people to go to like Providence and pick an area we're going to meet. You know, go map cameras and then meet someplace and have like lunch or something like. I mean, we're flexible as to what we do, and we don't have to just do it on September 11th. We could continue on and do it, you know, every two weeks until it gets too cold. So that sounds good. So I know I think Chicago is talking about it. Um, maybe Indiana. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. It's always fun to get out to those events. All right, so um, with that, I guess, shall we adjourn? I'll stop the recording.
Uh, and Joe, if you could hang out just a moment, I have a question for you. Of course. Thank you. All right, folks. Um, thank you for watching this. Uh, we did video record this sort of, but I don't know that this, I'm not sure Big Blue Button recorded that. So no, we'll, we'll see. You'll at least have the audio and the screen presentation. So, and uh, thank you to Agaric for providing this service. Uh, we've been using uh, meet.coop and it looks like we're gonna transfer over to Agaric. Uh, that seems to be working better. And uh, thanks to fellow pirate Mickey uh, for all of her help on this. Thanks, Mickey. <laughs> all right, take care folks. Hope you found this useful. Bye.